is beyond you. You carry a present. You can't even explain it. I with me. You can. So I want you. To, I want you to just believe God that 2024 will be a better year for you. And I'm not saying this for sake. I'm saying this because I have a personal conviction in me. If you can keep to this, you will enjoy that blessing. Amen. Amen. You know, Joseph, even in in in, in the prison, just says God's presence was with him. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, even as we go into your word tonight, speak to us in the name of Jesus. That it make my tongue like a pen of a ready writer. Speak life unto us in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise, sir. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can we just appreciate Minister MP? Where is it? Okay. Let's appreciate it. Let's appreciate it. Let's appreciate it. Um, it's, good, it's good to see him. It's good to have him. Praise God. Um, you know, let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Fantastic. It's good to see him. You know, he's a man of God. And so it's good to see him. And by God's grace, every now and then we'll see more of him in Jesus' name. Uh, I'm looking forward to when he's going to stand on, on this altar and preach because that man has got a word. I'm not going to tell you he's preaching next week Sunday. Come and you'll find out. Okay, oftentimes, no, don't, don't let me go there. All right? Okay, um, so we started speaking on the power. We started a series last week speaking about the power of God's presence. And we said that, you know, the thing for, for us as a ministry. In, in the month of January, the theme for the month of January is um, let your presence go with us. Let your presence go with us. You know, Moses says, I will not go if your presence does not go with me because it is God's presence with the man that makes a difference. It's not you but what you carry. Are you with me? It's not you but what you carry. People give you compliments because of what you are wearing, not you. If you don't wear something good, you ain't going to get a compliment. So it's not you, it's what you are wearing. And more than what you are wearing is the person that is with you. You know, when you are going, when you are going out and you have a, a nice perfume on, people smell it. You know, when, when you are driving a, you know, a Rolls Royce, a Lexus, it is obvious the kind of car you are, that you are driving. So that which you are, you are driving, people appreciate it. Are you with me? Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, so we went on to talk about what God's presence is. We ended last week's Sunday talking about, we, we, we looked at the characteristics of God's presence. Because we need to understand what God's presence looks like. All right, we look at five of them, but today I want to move on. And today we want to look at, you see, we've looked at the characteristics of God's presence, but more importantly, there are conditions for that for you to, for you to enjoy God's presence. There are conditions that you have to meet. Are you with me? You can't just wish first class as a student. <laughs> In your workplace, you can't just wish promotion. You, you have to meet certain criteria. You have to meet certain conditions. You know, some people, they've been doing so well that one day they get recognized. And some people, some people they've been doing so bad that they will not be recognized. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. So we want to look at conditions, okay? We want to look at seven of them, okay? Because it's important we know that while God's presence is available to us and available for us, there are certain things you must do. Are you with me? There are certain things I must do. Failure, <laughs> a student who does not enter the exam all and write the exam, you can spend 10 hours to pray, nothing going to happen. You have to physically meet the writing the exams. You can imagine someone called Minister MP who is a teacher and said, Sir, I couldn't come to the exam today because the Lord said I should pray. You think Mr. MP will pass the student? No. Because you have to meet the condition. Are you with me? You see, now we need to understand what grace is. Alright, God's presence, there are certain things we have to do. There's a part that God will play, and there's a part that will play. Okay? Because 
the sacrifice of Jesus for our redemption is complete work. And there is nothing we can add or remove from it. Alright? But however, we need to continue to pursue or to press forward for righteousness. Okay? So, when we talk about these conditions, alright, you know, someone said if there are ten steps to get to God, God is ready to make nine. You need to make one step. And so even if God makes that ninth step towards you, that one step you refuse to make will look as if the whole world. But it's just one step. And what is that step? Obedience. What is that step? Acceptance. Give your life to him. Are you with me? So if you are not living in righteousness, you are not a child of God. And therefore, you cannot experience his presence. So, there are many things God is willing to do. You know, when as a student, all right, there is a requirement for you as a student. You have to attend your lectures. You know, at least lecturers will tell you the amount of hours they take to prepare a lecture. What you need to do is to attend your lectures and go away and go through your lecture notes and then come and write your exams. Those are the conditions you need to meet. In fact, some students in, 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 in university level, if you are an international student and you don't meet at least 85% attendance, you get killed out of your course automatically. Because it's a condition. Whether you come for an exam is your problem. <laughs> Whether you revise, that's on you. But lectures, you must come. Are you with me? So you have to meet that condition. Failure to meet that condition means that you, you can get kicked out. I've got three key scriptures that I want to read tonight. And uh, Matthew 6 and verse 33 in the Amplified Version. It says, But first and foremost, importantly seek his kingdom. Talking about the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The righteousness is God's way of doing things. Okay, And all these things will be added unto you. So seek first. Focus on what is important to God. And every other thing will be handed unto you. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 11. He says, But as for you, O man of God, flee from these things. Aim at and pursue righteousness. Okay? Godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. There are certain things we must flee from to enjoy God's presence. There are certain things you must do and some things you must not do. It's interesting what Joseph said to Potiphar's wife when she tried to sleep with him. She tried to get him to sleep with her. And he said that, I cannot do this and sin against God because he was conscious of God's presence. I was in Nottingham Church earlier this morning and Pastor Pat was leading prayer and she was saying that yes, God's presence is everywhere. But you, need, you also need to know that God's presence is with you right now, right here. God's presence is in your house. That is not relevant to you now. It's, it's with you here also. Are you with me? Okay, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 7. It says, Their children... Do not let anyone deceive you about this. When people who do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. So ladies and gentlemen, there are certain things that are wrong. Are you with me? There are certain things that are wrong. So scripture says, when we do what is right, because we are, we are righteous. And I pray that to be your portion in Jesus' name. So I want to I want to speak on seven things that we need to, seven conditions, seven things that we need to do. There are many of them, I like to keep my message short and simple, but I guess um, seven is not short, but we'll get there. Okay? Because if we don't, if you, if you want to enjoy God's presence, there are requirements. You know, if you, if you don't feel God's presence with you, there are certain things you can do to draw His presence closer to you. Similarly, you know, if, if I'm missing my wife or I'm missing a friend, I'll give them a call. Can you come over for a meal? Can you come over for a movie? 
Does that make sense? So the same way I'm missing um, Stephen, and I've given a call, I say, oh, it's been, it's been a long time, you want to play some FIFA? And do, do, you want, do, do you want to watch a movie? Do you want us to watch football together? Right? Do you want to play a game? All right? So I invite him. I, 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 I took a step. The same thing with God. If you don't feel God's presence, there are certain things you must do. Number one, praises. When you praise, when you praise God, you see, when you feel, what, 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 when you are feeling somehow, you put on, you, you see, there are some, there are some worshippers. If you listen to them, you will catch fire. Masokete bretoshka, lepa kasekete boshka. When you are down. Look for Jehovah's Sunday and listen to him. You will catch fire. Look for Ebuka song. You will catch fire. Look for Nathaniel Basi. You will catch. You will. You will catch fire by force. Are you with me? So praise Psalm twenty-three, Psalm twenty-two, and verse three. But you are holy. Oh, you are enthroned in the holy place. The praises of Israel are offered. So when you praise God. The presence of God comes to you. Feel God's presence. Are you with me? So praises. It's important that we praise God, and that is why it is important. You see, you can pray amiss. You cannot praise amiss. Are you with me? You can pray. You pray amiss by praying the wrong prayer, or you cannot praise amiss. If you can, let me start praising you now, you have to start swelling. Sister Faith, if I start praising you, if I go to you and start praising you, start saying these wonderful things, only you just empty your account and say, Pila, give me your account number. <laughs> because there's something, pray you know when you want to get something for your parents? You start saying these nice things. You know your dad is interesting, but you say this nice thing, his head is swelling, you say, what do you want? You know, you catch them at the right time. You know, you know, you know what praises does? Praises will trigger God's manifestation. It is a trigger. Praise is a trigger. It triggers something with God. You see, when you treat when you treat God as if He's physically with you, He's physically around. That is what you should do. Scripture says in Acts chapter sixteen and verse twenty-five, Paul and Silas they were in the prison and they started praising God. They started praising God. And the scripture says the chains broke open because God's presence was 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 provoked. So I want to encourage you, if you want to enjoy God's presence, learn to praise God. You know, and when you talk about praising God, you may not know how to sing like me. Listen to worship songs. Just play them. You know, my wife does something. She's always playing praises song, going to sleep. You can imagine the atmosphere, even if the devil comes, you run back. Because the atmosphere is saturated. If you find it difficult to sleep, there are some things you need to listen to as you go to bed. They will, they will purify the environment. The devil, the devil cannot even enter. Number two, God's word. God's word. You see, God and his word are the same and they cannot be separated. You cannot separate God from God's word. <laughs> And the more you fill your heart with God's word, the more his glory reflecting you. John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. The word of God, ladies and gentlemen, is the mind of God in print. When you want to hear God, read his word. The word of God is so powerful because scripture says the word of God is alive. Hebrews 4 and verse 12. The word of God is alive and it is active. If you want to enjoy God's presence, let God's word be in your heart. Are you with me? Let God's word be around you. Seek the word of God diligently. Study and meditate on God's word. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What you don't have, you cannot give. Are you with me? What? Because, you see, I told us last week, Sunday, that as wonderful as 2024 will be, there will be challenges. I will be lying to you if I say 
this year will not come with some fair share of challenges. But scripture says, I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. So in the midst of those challenges, you, put, you, 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 you declare God's word, God's word, you activate his presence. You pray using God's word, you give strength to your prayer. You see, it is not just quoting God's word, but the dimension of revelation of the truth or the light that floods your heart is what is important. It's not just quoting, but you have a, a, a dimension of truth because you have a deep understanding. You have what I call a revelational understanding of God's word. The word of God becomes life to you. You hold it. You hold it. So I want to encourage you, if you really want to enjoy God's presence this year, not only should you praise him, but read his word. Know what the word of God says, because it will help you. Amen? Number three, sacrifices. Let your life be a living sacrifice. You see, one of the things I've seen that with these young people of the generation is, we don't want to make sacrifice. We are not ready to go the extra mile. The word sacrifice means to give up something valuable for the sake of other considerations. Give up. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to let go for God? Solomon in scripture was a man of sacrifice. He will, he will make so much sacrifice that it will, it will provoke God's presence. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Romans 12 and verse 1. You see, oftentimes, when we talk about sacrifices, nobody would see what God sees. And, and God rewards. Are you with me? You see, when you, when, when you make your life a living sacrifice unto God, doing the things of God, automatically you, you invite God's presence into your, in, into your situation. Scripture says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your body to God because of all he has done. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. Make your body, make your life a living sacrifice. You yourself, if you, if you can sacrifice your heart, you, can, you have sacrificed your whole self. But the problem with us is we only sacrifice a part of us. We are not willing to go all the way. We look at Joseph. Joseph lived, he sacrificed everything. Even when he had a, the chance to revenge, he did it. Scripture says in 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 3, Solomon showed his love for the Lord by walking according to the instructions given him by his father David. Except that he offered sacrifices and burnt incense on the high places. Ladies and gentlemen, until you are willing to go the extra mile. You see, like I said, there are so many things I do that people don't see, but God sees. And God rewards sacrifices. You see, when, when you are going the extra mile for God, there's no way His presence will not protect you. When you are keeping your body as a living sacrifice in a relationship, there's no way, you know, I was reading, I saw something on social media today. Uh, someone said that it doesn't take two people to make a marriage work. It takes three people. The the, the, the the husband, the wife, and God. So if God is missing, then it's not going to work. I thought, wow, I've never, I've, I've never said it that way before. But the God factor is the most important factor. Take out the God factor, you just be working hard every time. You are stressed out, you are this, because the real factor is missing. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Number four, loving God. We love God by the way of honoring Him. Okay? Everybody naturally to be where they are loved. You see, when you have friends, if you know people, you naturally you want to go to where you are being loved, right? When people when, when you have two friends and this person loves you 
more than this other person. You tend to go, go towards the person that loves you because you just you feel appreciated. So when we when we when when we demonstrate that we love God, we automatically enjoy His presence. Because, like I said, you can imagine. I've just told Stephen, "Oh, do you want to play FIFA? Do you want us to watch movie and things like that?" And they were, and he's thinking, "I'm not sure Pilar really likes me. I think Pilar is mean to me." Chances that we say, "You know, I'll come next week. Like I'm busy still. Like I'll see what I can do in it." He won't come. Are you with me? And sometimes, because of the love you have for someone, you even go there unannounced. You know, you just surprise them. Because, 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 because you guys have good friendship. John chapter 14, verse 23 to 24. John chapter 14, verse 23 to 24. Jesus replied, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and they will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not mine. What I'm telling you is from the Father who sent me. But, but where I'm really going, he says, he said, all who love me, will do what I say. My Father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. So when we love God, when we love God, we automatically invite His presence. We automatically bring Him into our life. And, you know, one of the ways you show that love, you know, one of the ways you show you love someone is you live a life of obedience. Are you with me? So many people say they, they love God, but the things they do, you cannot love someone and disobey them. Are you with me? Yeah. You cannot love someone and always give an excuse to come around them. Mm -hmm. That is fake love. That's not genuine. Mm -hmm. You can imagine somebody they love you and they have not spoken to you in a long time. They don't even they haven't even checked up and whether well, this love, I'm not sure. I don't want this kind of love. Mm -hmm. That will not be a person in Jesus' name. Number four, obedience. I love this. I found this, this quote online. It says, God's love language is obedience. God's love language is obedience. And if you love God, you will obey. If you love him, you will obey. And obedience to God activates his presence in your life. When you live a life of obedience, you are honoring God. And when you honor God, you will enjoy the blessings of honoring. Obedience means to comply with an order, a request, a submission to another authority. You see, can I shock you? No matter the sacrifices you make, if you do it in disobedience, it's a waste of time. Are you with me? First John chapter 5 and verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. So I want to encourage you in 2024, make up your mind that I will obey God. I will obey God no matter what. Obedience to God is not the most popular. Are you with me? Yeah. Obedience to God is not the most popular. Sometimes you just want to do your own thing. Are you with me? I, I, I want to talk about obedience to God. When you disobey God, it does not necessarily mean that you have sinned, but God is not happy with you. I'll give you an example. Maybe you're supposed to come to church or do something like, you know what? I'm a little bit too tired. I can't stress myself. I can't make it. You have disobeyed. You have not seen, but God is not happy with you. Are you with me? So obedience is, is, is just do it. In fact, in the, in the military, 
I think they say obey first and complain later. So when 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 the people who have higher ranks than you, they give you an instruction, you obey, you do it, and then you can now complain later. I want you to remember we need to remember God and His will. God's will and God's word will never change. God's will for your life, God's word will never change. So if you don't obey it, it is your own, to your own detriment. So if you want to enjoy God's packing, if you want to enjoy God's plan, if you want to enjoy God's purpose for your life, if you want to enjoy God's blessings, if you want to really enjoy God's presence, then live a life of obedience. Let your life be an example of a godly obedience and you will enjoy. Number six, number five. Oh, sorry, that was number five. Obedience number five. Number six, fellowship. Fellowship. You see, there are two types of fellowship. That's what we call personal fellowship and corporate fellowship. Corporate fellowship is when we are in church like this. I really enjoyed the, the, the praise and worship this evening. I felt that it was just, it was just spontaneous. Does that make sense? And I thought this is, this is really powerful. And you, you, you feel God's presence because you are together. And Hebrews 10 and verse 1 says, We should not forsake the assembly of God's people. Don't let us not forsake each other's acts, fellowship. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes there are days where you come to church, but it was really a struggle. Like, maybe I should not go, maybe I should go, but you came nonetheless. And you need and uplifting. You need something to lift up your spirit. And you hear the word, the praise and worship, the prayer, someone's testimony, and it just, it just, it just encourages you. You just get fired up. Are you with me? That's what um, corporate fellowship does. And personal fellowship, could just says in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10, three times a day, Daniel will pray to God. So I want to encourage you, take time out. Don't joke with your quiet time. You must plan to have a quiet time with God daily. If not daily, it must be regular. Whether it is twice, even if it is once a week. It's not that you want to you want to have quality time once a week, and that once a week is 30 minutes. You are joking. At least let it be two. If it's going to be once a week, spend time. Because some of you are, who are in a relationship, you know that when you, when you are seeing Bay once a week or once a month, you spend time. It's not like, oh, I'm only going to give you 10 minutes and go. <laughs> That's the beginning of the end. You spend quality time. You spend the whole weekend, the whole Saturday. You have different things you are doing and whatnot. Because, you know, you are trying to, you know what you are trying to do? You are trying to make up for the whole month or for the whole week in one day. So you plan for it. So when you want to have a, a personal fellowship with God, if you're going to be once a week, at least two hours, give God quality time. Worship Him, praise Him, talk to your Father, talk to your Maker, talk to your King. Don't just rush it. Don't just make it quick. Spend quality time with Him and you will enjoy His presence. Because often times, when we spend time with God, God will give us revelations. He will speak to us in different ways. He will give us different instructions. He will give us directions and things like that. And it just makes your day easier. It just makes your week easier. It just makes, it just makes your month easier. Finally, number seven, righteousness. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot live in sin and enjoy God's presence. Right. The word righteousness means to be in the right standing with God. If you are in the wrong standing with God, you cannot enjoy His presence. So, another word for to, 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 to be in the right place. To be in the right standing. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot live in sin. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. He says, so flee youthful passion and pursue righteousness. 
You cannot live in sin and expect to experience God's presence. You're not going to experience it. You must be in the right standing with God. You must be holy because God cannot dwell where there is iniquity. And the reason why many of us are not really enjoying God's presence is because we are living in sin. We are living in sin. A little, a little here, a little there. We are always lying. It's a white lie. Lie is, there is no color that describes lie. When, it, when I, there's nothing like, if there is white, I mean, that, that means there is black, there is pink, there is yellow, there is burgundy, lie. It's a joke. Lie, you have lied, you have lied. And oftentimes, Holy Spirit will break your heart that that's not true. You try to justify, well, anyway, it's my parent, I can just, just be honest. So I want to encourage you, God wants us to be in the right standing with him. When we live a, a, when we live a life of holiness, you see, righteousness automatically in provoke God's presence. It's automatic. You see, when you live in, in righteousness, you don't even need to pray for God's presence. Because when Joseph was in the pit, he didn't pray while he was in the pit, but God's presence was with him. Because while his siblings threw him in the pit, he wasn't cursing or swearing at them. He was pleading. He was begging. He was trying to appease to them. When he was in prison, yes, he moaned in the prison, but he wasn't, he wasn't doing anything. He wasn't even cursing God. Oftentimes, for some of us, just a little something, you say, God, why me? God, this, God, that. I'm not even, I don't even want to believe in this God anymore. I don't want to go to church again. Blah, 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 blah. That's the devil trying to frustrate you. That's the, the devil trying to give you a negative thought. Scripture says, For I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you. Thought of good and not of evil. To give you a hope and a future. To bring you to an expected end. So God has an expected end for you, for me, and it's a glorious one. Are you going to re- are you going to believe the report of God or the devil? Let us rise up on our feet. I'm going to round up this message in two weeks' time, talking about the capacity of God's presence. What can God's presence do? What can God's presence become? What can God's presence be in my life? But I want you to pray. I want you to pray. These are conditions that we need to meet. If you don't meet these conditions, you are wasting your time. I want you to say, God, help me. And there are many more. Okay, there are many more. One other condition is you need to have faith in God. Are you with me? Another condition to enjoy God's presence is to believe Him. Believe Him. And God says, greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. I want you to just pray. As the Holy Spirit, help me. Whatever condition your word is giving me, help me to meet it. Help me to meet all those requirements. The wonderful things about these conditions is they are there. They are not hidden. Are you with me? They are not hidden. They are there. It's interesting, you know, I normally tell people that I can never fail an open book exam. <laughs> I'm telling you. I don't care what you say. Open book exam, I cannot. I, I can take my test and I'll still fail. <laughs> of course, the marking scheme for that will be rigorous, will be, will be intense because you are allowed to take your books in there. So if you don't do it properly, then it's on you. So, so you can imagine you go into an exam hall and you are allowed to take your books in there and you still fail. Your mind is not there. Simply put. So this, this, all these conditions, they are not hidden. They are there in God's word. Praising God. Reading God's word. Being a living sacrifice. Loving God. Living a life of obedience. Fellowship. Righteousness. I want you to pray. God, help me. 
Just ask him to help you and say, God, help me. I want to be in the right standing with you. I don't want to live in sin. I don't want to be a sinner. I don't want to be a perpetual sinner. Lord, help me to be in the... You see, what makes you a sinner is not because you sin. What makes you a sinner is that you are living in sin. Are you with me? When you sin, Holy Spirit pricks your heart. You ask him to forgive you. When you ignore those warning signs and you are continue living in sin, then you are a sinner. Want to pray? This will help me. Masi kati bredo shete te boska le pako seke te bredo raka seke te bredo doshka lo braka kasi ke te bredo masi ke te bredo re ke te bredo le braka soko to le bredo le she ke te bredo masi ke te bredo re ke te ke le bredo re kata baba masi ke te bredo le braka ko she ke te bredo raka kaka se ke te bredo doshka ask him to help you say King of Kings help me Lord God help me to meet is it Amen. Can I give you a secret? All of these conditions, there is a helper who can help you meet those conditions. Because to live a life of righteousness in the 21st century is, is not easy. It's not easy. But when you have this Holy Spirit with you, it will help you to achieve those things. You are not doing it in your power. Say, Holy Spirit, help me. I want to live a holy life. Help me. I want to be obedient. Help me to love you more. So that is, that, that is the secret. I want to pray the Holy Spirit help me. Masikati, help me. Because without the Holy Spirit help, you, you, you will do today, tomorrow you will not do. You don't be fluctuating. But the Holy Spirit help you to have stability. And then you can enjoy God's presence. Because the moment you become born again, we cannot live this life alone. We cannot please God by your own. You cannot do it. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Spirit of God to help us to be able to do it. That Spirit is alive in us. That Spirit, we need to engage that Spirit. As long as we are engaging that Spirit, we cannot go wrong. Marika zekete bredo shekete gede le praso kete bredo masake te bredo gede rekata baba maleke shekete bredo sekoto regede gede rekete bredo la braka zigede gede marike de gede lo braka da shekete gede le praso kete bredo marike sekete bredo oh father we thank you we worship you Lord we give you all the praise sir we give you all the glory hallowed be thy name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, may we not just be hearers of your word. May we be doers in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, help us to meet all these conditions so that we can enjoy your presence, so that we can really enjoy the power, the benefit, the glory, the purpose of your presence in the name of Jesus. I commit this week into your hand. This week shall be a blessed week in the name of Jesus. This week, whatever you lay your hands upon, may you prosper in the name of Jesus. This week will be a glorious week. This week for you, you will not struggle. This week, everywhere you go, may you enjoy God's presence in the name of Jesus. This week, every evil plan, every evil agenda over your life, I cancel and I destroy in the name of Jesus. This week, Holy Spirit will lead you. It will instruct you. It will direct you in the name of Jesus. This week, the Lord will give you a unique testimony. The Lord will give you a word of a kind testimony. This week, I pray for you. The Lord will give you a generational testimony in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise, sir. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Can we share the Christian fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and His mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Talk to your neighbor and the news to them. Surely. Surely God's goodness and his message shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord.
forever and ever. Amen. And now to the show it to yourself. Surely God's goodness and his mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Have a wonderful week. God bless you and God bless me.